Hello everybody, the freelance teacher coming at you once again from my soundproof studio. My legions of fans are always asking me how do I manage to do such amazing quality in my soundproof studio and I say well you know the costs are really cheap. It costs me zero dollars and zero cents to make these things. It's just a question of time, putting it out there, getting your opinion out there. You have your phone, you have a YouTube channel, right? If you have a Gmail account, you make a short video and you upload it to YouTube. And uh, a lot of our teenagers seem to be under the misconception that you may, if you make YouTube videos, then you make a ton of money. And it's really weird because I had, uh, I mentioned that I have a YouTube channel and they're like, oh, you must be getting paid. You must be making a lot of money. And I, I said, I make no money from my YouTube channel. Um, and my video uh, range in terms of views ranges from three to 12,000. And that's a very small amount. That's a tiny number of videos. And it's a trial and error process. And people think, you know, you put something uh, up on YouTube, you make money. And so then I asked students if you make, you know, I asked them how many of you have a YouTube channel? And the numbers were zero. The numbers were zero, nothing. And then, then it came out in the second the second section, the other, the next period class, one person had a YouTube channel that he barely used and did some gaming talk on it. And it's so weird that, you know, the prevailing wisdom is in the students in my high school, have a YouTube channel, post videos and get well paid, right? Oh, you must be making bread. Well, well, if that's the case, then why don't you do it? I mean, it's not true. It doesn't work that way. You don't just put videos up and get paid and make a killing and, and retire on a beach earning 20%. You know, it doesn't work like that. If it did, everybody would do it. Anyone with half a brain would do it. Um, but that's the, one of the problems with uh, some of the youth with whom I work, the young adults, will have these ideas in their head and then, you know, not capitalize on them. If that were the case, then you'd think I'd have 25 people who would have who had YouTube channels, many of them, if not all of them, would be making no money at all. And they'd all say, wow, I thought that if you just put up videos, you'd make money and it didn't work out. But no, they have the idea that you do make money and you get paid, yet no one's tried it. It's bizarre. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, the lead into what I'm doing. And I have not had market success yet, but I'm just kind of getting this out there early so that hopefully in the future, which I plan on it being the case, I'm making much better money in my non-regular job than in my current job as a high school English teacher. I'm dabbling in e-commerce, and there are a couple of projects that I'm working on. One of them is an online store where it's run by Shopify, and I don't keep any inventory, and I buy products at a, a price X and I sell them for X plus $5 or X plus $10 or, you know, 60% markup or 90% markup or 20% markup. And the idea is that through Facebook ads and Facebook posts and other social media that the sales will increase. Now the, the catch is you have to test ads and you have to test posts and you have to see where a market is and then sell those products on the market on the internet. So it sounds easy, but what you get is a de facto education in how to do Facebook ads, how to do ads in general, and how to do marketing. And that brings me to the people to whom I listen. One of them is Tom Woods, who I got into by becoming a very serious libertarian an actual student of free market economics, not just someone who waves a foam finger and says the free market is number one and everyone else is stupid. That's not what Tom Woods is about. That's not what I'm about. But that's how I found out who Tom Woods was. And now he's been dabbling in e-commerce and been successful and is sharing success stories. Uh, I'm listening to one of his podcasts now where he's talking to people who are regular folks who are making good money selling things online with a store that is run by, right, the background engine is Shopify. And they joined a program that I did, so it's very motivating to hear success stories. 
And they have a successful plan. Uh, Woods got it out there in his podcast, these people who make, have made money online and been successful. And I'm following my own advice. I tell young people, find a product or a service, find one that's worked, find people who have methods that have worked, and copy them. And then after that, if you want to innovate or find your niche and be kind of put, put your twist on what you're doing, then that's what you do. But you find a successful program, you find successful advice, you find reliable sources, and you follow them. And you come up with, like, uh, with what Scott Adams talks with, with a systems brand of thinking. So I'm working on that, and there are other podcasts in terms of guests. I've talked about Successful Dropout, but I've also talked about people like Bob Bly. There's a podcast with Tom Woods on the Woods Tom Woods Show with Bob Bly. He's an expert marketer and expert copywriter. So that podcast I found priceless because it talks about not only how e-commerce works, but how to get people to respond to advertisements. And if they respond to advertisements... They'll buy things. And how do you do that, right? That's an arts, craft, science kind of thing that is helpful to learn and I think a, an invaluable skill. Lastly, I've partnered with another person who is like-minded and wants to make money online and kind of break away from the machine in which we work, another public school teacher, and this woman and I are going to start a podcast, The Mavericks Within the Machine, is the tentative title, which I like. I think we'll keep it. And we'll start a podcast and build an email list and you know, give away some informational products and that will lead to a larger email list which will lead to other things for sale. And it's a process and it's a system. And these processes have worked and they're a way to make money, not necessarily get rich. And it's possible that the whole thing could go up in flames and fail. But you've got to get your name out there. You've got to get out there and put in the time. And I think that's really the differentiating factor. And that's what I'll leave you with, is that I try to practice what I preach. And one of the other people who's changed my life in terms of belief and thought and economics and uh, control and force and libertarianism is Gary North. And he's written repeatedly in many different ways that intelligence, and I, and I used to have this, I actually used to have this quote on my wall, and I'll probably have to put it back up. Is, and, and he said very clearly, intelligence is not the differentiating factor in success. Determination is. And what he's saying is an old lesson that gets laughed at by many people in politics and many people in the education system um, with this idea that you, sh that you have to lift yourself up by the bootstraps and you have to work hard. And, and people scoff at that. They're like, look at all of these oppressors in your life. Look at how they're keeping you down. You, have the, you, look, you look the wrong way. Right? You're the wrong ethnicity. You're the wrong race. We get this in my building a lot. You can't do this because look at all of the systems in place. Look at all the systemic issues that are blocking you down. And the great horror show that has happened from what I've seen after two decades of this is a lot of young people who just won't try. They're like, well, why would I try? Why would I try? If these systems are in place, and it is impossible to succeed, and you're, you, my professor in college, and I had someone do this, I actually had a professor at Iowa who openly mocked the idea that hard work and lifting yourself up by the bootstraps and the quote-unquote so-called American dream, like this was an object of ridicule, that it didn't exist. So if you tell young people enough of that so many times, they start to believe it. And, and that's really where the, the podcast comes in. We need to talk about these things educationally. We need to talk about what you can do, what is possible, how the education system maybe isn't telling you things that might help you out, and why there might be people who would gladly see you be, being a helpless, um, poor, or intellectually poor serf. There might be people out there who have no problem with you being unable to escape the the burdens of please, you know, please let politician or educator X save me. It's possible that there are people out there who like that and need you to be without any skill and be, be what I call learned helplessness. Um, sounds conspiratorial, but I think it's out there. And maybe it's time to expose people to other ways and other things. 
So these are the projects that I'm doing, that I'm taking a look at. It's uh, October of 2017, and we'll see how it goes together. And I'll keep you posted as to how the projects are going and what success or lack of success has happened and what you learn from it, right? What I learned from it, and then I'll tell you, and then you can learn from it too and not do those mistakes. So that's about it. This is the Freelance Teacher. Looking forward to doing the podcast. Looking forward to you getting connected to what I and we, my, my uh, podcast partner in crime, uh, Miss Bonner, are up to. And look for Mavericks Within the Machine. Look for e-commerce and educational advice. Look for information that you can use. And then you parlay that into having a fulfilling, rich life. And remember, rich does not necessarily mean money. There are other ways to be rich. All right, talk to you soon. See you next time, thefreelanceteacher.com and tfttravelgroup.com. Take care, folks.